So, how would you go about computing the cosine score between a query and every single document in your uh, corpus? Okay, now you're you're not we're not talking about three or four documents. Now we are talking about uh, a huge index, okay, which has millions of documents. Now you have a query that's coming in, and you want to compute the cosine score between that query and every single document. Okay, so this pseudocode uh, tells you how to do that. So again, you know, your documents are sorted in increasing order of doc IDs. And what that means is if you retrieve the postings list for a particular term, you're going to get the postings in increasing order of doc IDs. So effectively, because of because that ordering is preserved, you exactly know what the TFIDF weights for each uh, for that particular term in all of the documents in that postings list is. Okay, so. So what I'm saying is, if you have an index, okay, so let's say the query has um, three terms. Okay, again, this is a free text query. It has just three terms, T1, T2, and T3. This is, conceptually, that is, this is T1, this is T2, this is T3. And these are the postings list for T1, let's say. These are the postings list for T2. And these IDs could be different across the three. By the way, what does it mean for the dot product of two vectors to be exactly equal to zero? What does that tell you about the two documents? Suppose you take a dot product between a query and a particular document and the dot product ends up being zero. And assume, let's assume that, you know, both the documents are non-empty, okay? If, if a document has no size, then that's a trivial way by which the dot product would be zero, but then you wouldn't call it a document. So let's assume that we have a finite uh, uh, size documents. If the dot product is zero, that means the set of terms that are appearing in the query and the set of terms that are appearing in the document are totally disjoint. Okay, any term that's appearing in the query is not appearing in that document. And any, any any term that's appearing in that document is not appearing in the query. So you'll have one column of non-zero TFIDF weights in the query vector, and you'll have another set of TFIDF weights, non-zero TFIDF weights in the document vector, but they won't correspond to one another. So when you take the dot product component wise, every non-zero TFIDF weight will get multiplied by a zero in the other vector. And so the uh, score is going to be a zero. So anyway, so how do we calculate um, the distance between the query and each of these documents? Can somebody explain uh, how, how you would go about doing that on the index? The pseudocode is here, but you know you can take help from the pseudocode here, and or you can try to independently uh, think about it. Clearly, you'll need to retrieve the postings list for all these three terms, right? Because you want to find out which documents contain those terms. But once you know which documents contain those terms, you also need to compute the distance between the query and each of those documents. Uh, let me give you a hint. Think about the same pointer walkthrough. Okay, imagine that there are, uh, I mean, one simple way to do that is to get the postings list for T. Uh, um, Well, I'll allow you to uh, answer this because we have some time. So, 
So here's another assumption that you may need. Let's assume, so recall that we used to store the term frequency along with the postings, posting entry itself, right? I mean, the, each posting consists of a doc ID, but you can also store the term frequency of T1 in each of those documents along with the doc IDs. Now instead of the term frequencies, what we are going to do is, we are going to store the TF-IDF weights or we can compute the TF-IDF weights on the fly. I mean, these are all design decisions, but if you want to keep things simple, let's assume that the TF-IDF weights um, are stored along with each doc ID. Now, I don't have any idea. I don't know. Thank you, sir. Hello? Yeah. Uh, sorry, sir. I don't have any idea about it. Okay. So, so uh, l let me try to help you out, okay? Okay. Um, Basically, at the end of it, how many scores do you want to compute? You want to compute, so let's say there are n documents in the corpus, okay? You want to compute n scores. Okay, so let's say the documents are D1 to Dn. Okay, you want to compute the score between the query and D1. Okay, so let's say that's the score the score for between the query and D1. You want to compute the, uh, the score between the query and D2. Okay, and let's say that's going to be stored in this uh, cell of the array. So if there are n documents, you're going to compute n scores and then take the reverse sorted version of these scores. And that will be the ranked order in which you'll return the documents, right? So these are the doc IDs here, one, two, three, and so on. These are the doc IDs from 1 to n. And ultimately, you want to uh, compute a score between the query and each of these documents. So let's say we have uh, an array called scores, okay, which is going to score, which is going to store the scores between the query and all the documents. Finally, okay, this is, these will contain the final scores at the end of this whole code. So here's one way you can do that. We know that these scores are additive, right? Because they would have been generated by adding the scores, adding the weights for individual terms, right? So for example, if this query has a term T1, then I would uh, we would have computed the contribution to this overall score of the weight of this term in the documents in which the term appears. Right, very similar to the calculations that we did in the at, at the beginning of the class. If there are four documents in which T1 appears, then for all four of those documents, you can compute the, the, the weight of T1, and that will just be the TF-IDF weight. Okay, so we can take the TF-IDF weight for this particular document, whatever that is, and add it, okay, and just add it to this. So all these values will start off being zero. Okay, and just like, uh, and, and we'll keep accumulating these scores as and when we encounter a new posting. Okay, so think about it this way, like every posting that you see will add something to one of these cells. Okay, if the posting was for document DI, then the, then the score in cell I, we'll take the score in cell I and add something to it. And what will we add? It'll be the, uh, the TF-IDF weight of th that particular term in this particular document. So we can, 
we can compute this particular array in two ways. We can do what is called term at a time scoring and we can do what is called as document at a time scoring. So going back to this, uh, maybe it will be easier to visualize for you if we look at the TF-IDF matrix. Where is that? Yeah, this one. So imagine uh, another vector for the query. Okay, and there will be some values over here. Now you want to compute the dot product between the query and all of these documents conceptually. Okay, of course we are not storing this as a uh, as an actual matrix because this is going to be a very sparse matrix. We will actually be working on the index, but conceptually, uh, this it may be easier for you to think about how to compute the dot. So when you do document at a time scoring, what we are going to be doing is we will take the query term we'll take the terms that actually appear in the query okay and focus on one document at a time so we'll focus on macbeth for example and then take the dot product of these uh, two vectors then we'll go to and and we'll store the value in the cell for macbeth okay that scores array will have a particular cell for this particular doc id okay and we'll store the score here then we'll take this query vector, take the dot product with another document over here and then store that value in uh, that particular cell. So what's the best way to do a single pass through the index? Okay, let's go back to the index now. Think about how you would implement this on an index in a single pass. Okay, you want to do a single pass through the postings list and compute these scores at the end of it by the end of that pass. What you'll do is something similar to how we uh, uh, to, to what we did in spelling correction when we were computing the Jacquard score between the query and every single document. Right? We'll have if, if we had three terms in the query we'll have three, point, three pointers walking through the postings list and we know that if we take a snapshot of this walkthrough then our current term, okay, just as we had a current term in the n-gram index in the Jacquard coefficient, we'll have a current document. We'll keep track of what is the current document and if we keep track of what is the current document, you'll notice that when we walk through the array, we'll be, the current document will be starting at 1, it'll, then it'll become 2, then it'll become 3, then it'll become 4 and so on. Okay, just as at the end of that walkthrough which we discussed in spelling correction, we had all the terms and uh, we were visiting all the terms in lexicographic order. We can do a similar kind of a walkthrough where in each step we will increment the pointer that is pointing to the lowest doc ID. And that way we will be walking these three pointers through the index in such a way that we will be visiting the doc documents in increasing order of doc ID overall and while we are examining a particular document okay, we know that we only have to focus on those three terms in the query okay so when we are at doc id i we'll just take the three entries okay there can be at most three entries for uh, that particular doc id i okay it's possible that two of the pointers may be pointing to it but the third pointer may not because that doc id may not appear in the third list at all Okay, so if two of the pointers appear there, we'll just take those two corresponding terms and then take the dot product of, you know, multiply those two with the corresponding two values here and just add them up and then store the result immediately in cell I. Do you see that? I'm describing it verbally, but I hope you're able to visualize what we're trying to do. It's exactly like we were you know how we were computing the Jacquard coefficient between the query and all the terms during uh, spelling correction. 
okay we are trying to focus we are trying to narrow down what was what are the good candidates for suggested spellings for a particular query and so we had to compute the jacquard coefficient between the query and all the um, terms in the index which we had stored in the postings list of the biogram index and we were traversing those postings in sorted order i hope it's clear uh, do you have any questions about this maybe i'm uh, spending too much time on this is this clear if it's too hard let me know if it's too simple let me know so that i can adjust my pace accordingly so this was document at a time scoring in term at a time scoring what we will do is we will do it term by term so i'll focus on the first i'll focus on t1 here and i'll focus on that particular term in all the documents okay so it's like focusing on the postings list for t1 the postings list for t1 will tell me what are the documents which contain the term t1 and these will be the the documents with non zero tfidf weights then i'll multiply this value okay which will be 1 in general uh with uh, well it need not be 1 if it's normalized uh so whatever this value is we'll multiply it with this and add it to that particular cell over here we'll multiply it with this and add it to the corresponding cell over here we'll add it we'll multiply this with hamlet and add it to the corris add the score to the corresponding entry for hamlet so the, this scores array will be continuously accumulating the scores as we focus on one term after another okay when we are focusing on one document at a time we were computing the score between the query and that document in one shot so the value that was going into this array was the final value but when we are doing term at a time scoring we will be accumulating partial scores okay and they they will accumulate as we focus on one term after another because we are doing it term by term so for the same term we are looking at all the documents containing that term computing how much weight that term has in all those documents and then adding those set of weights to the corresponding cells of the documents so i'll leave with that i'll uh, uh, you know i'll i'll allow you to just uh, look at this pseudo code and then see what what's being done 